November 2nd, 2009 was the date where we released our very first video here on YouTube. <laughs> it was uh, part one of Juwan the Grudge. That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, what, what, what made you want to do a YouTube channel in the first place? Because I don't know. At an early age, I kind of already knew. I was one of those lucky kids that already knew what I wanted to do. And I liked being an entertainer, and I liked talking about things that I enjoyed, and video games, and, and I was kind of a jack-of-all-trades, from an artist to a gamer to somebody who wanted to be an entertainer, from an actor. So I wanted to try all these different mediums. And of course, my original start, I think, was on Newgrounds with stuff that you cannot find anymore. Um, <laughs> if I have anything to say about it. Well, before uh, that, too, and also... And there was that, DeviantArt. Yeah, we, uh, we kind of... Of kind of the first kind of brotherhood of gaming things we ever did was on our DVRD page. Yeah, it's a page that's been dead for like over a decade. Eleven years. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess that's where the brotherhood of gaming technically started. And right. yeah, because that's uh, when uh, in the first video I say what is known as the brotherhood of gaming, as if like there was a reputation prior <laughs> to right. the, the video, and it's like. It's the first one. What is known as? What are you talking about? And when I say that, I mean in context to the to the friends and the people that we already had mm. that knew us from the DeviantArt page. That's where that came from. Um, it was funny uh, watching that video, um, looking at the way we were back then. Um, first thing you notice is that back then I had hair. Mm. <laughs> I think I like to think what's happened is ever since my hair left my head and. With your face. <laughs> we had like a little hair <laughs> yeah. transfusion going to happen. Give it another 20 years, I imagine you're going to be like Beast Boy, like bald, and I'll be like Nightwing with the flowing hair, and you're just going to be like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, that was, um, damn, that'd be like 11 years ago. And uh, since we uh, didn't do anything for our 10-year anniversary because, you know, things happen, I thought it'd be nice to kind of sit here and talk about... Uh, Kind of do a retrospective on us, the Brotherhood of Gaming, uh, where we, how we started, where we, what we did, and uh, how we got to this point. Now, when we first started this channel, we were strictly a Let's Play, um, because at the time that was now for you kids out there who don't know, a Let's Play is when you. This is before live streams and stuff like that. <laughs> you would record video, of you playing a video game, you know, and then you would commentate over it. You know, it was actually a little more archaic than that, even because Let's Play was so new that there were no kind of correct ways to go about it because getting being able to record your games was a trial in of itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could you had the people with the emulators that had the specific screen recorders, and I know that some of us probably in the comments are thinking of, like, the hypercam. <laughs> like, do, you, do you remember how we recorded our Jew on the ground? Oh, yeah, <laughs> which, was, like, uh, which was not unlike how a lot of other people were doing it with the whole camera pointing at the, the screen and, and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Point the camera at the television. Hope for the best. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. And I think what at least worked for us uh, with Juwan is that the it was Halloween, mm -hmm. and the mood did kind of fit because it was a horror game. It was it was at night when we did it, so it, it was very atmospheric. The way yeah, the way we did it was probably what it was a good choice. Um, but going back to what I said, it was very archaic the way we went about uh, recording the games because we had hyper cams which would record the screens if you had an emulator. Mm -hmm. But recording direct video games was just not something that was truly doable yet unless you were one of those special cases that had a DVD recorder that had the option to do that otherwise. That came later on though. Later on we, we've got a, a DVD recorder. It was very shortly yeah. after because we got we got a disc. What we do, we take the DVD recorder, we put the disc in, mm -hmm. we connect it to the console and we would play the game. Mm -hmm. And we would have like one of those cameras and we would be we, we used to have I used to have this brown futon. Mm -hmm. Finally threw it away this year because it was so broken. But we would sit on there, we would cap the camera pointed right at us and that's how we record the audio. And we would just put it together that way um you know and another thing too is that if you want to go back and find any of those let's play stuff 
it, they're like gone from our channel. Now, now they're still out there on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see something funny, you can just think, like type in TVOG Morris one 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 three, and you can actually find all our old stuff that's like floating out there in the ether. <laughs> like uh, when we did our let's plays, though, we got we got a lot of help from Vash. Did I, I thought at least we got some pointers, or at least they kind of helped us. Yeah, because he, he at least had degree. yeah he had a little bit more of the techno. Technological aspects. Yeah. So kind of asked for like um, um, suggestions. I remember like you did a um, you did a playthrough of hit of the Lost of Nightmares Red Single Five DLC. Yeah, we both did that. Wow, that was shoot. That was shoot, man. <laughs> we did Juon. We did uh, Castlevania. That was the first one. What we what I tried to do to make it kind of stand out because back this is like the early 2010s. Yeah. So there were a lot of Let's Players out there. One thing I would try to do to help us like stand out is we actually did a lot of live action skits. Back yeah. in the day, we did a lot of live action stuff. I still remember the one that we shot for Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles, where yeah, you were covered in. Uh, we went to hot. Yeah, I remember that yeah, now. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we went to Hot Topic. We bought. Was that for a? That was for Dark. That yeah, was for Dark Side Chronicles. Yeah, we went to Hot Topic and we bought a pack of red blood juice. <laughs> Uh, poured that on you, uh, pretended you were dead, and uh, I was wearing uh, Grandpa's leather jacket and yes, some shades. And some shades. we were using like, we, we, were, we were using a wee gun, and we were just shooting random stuff before the let's play would start. And it was different. I'm not saying it was good. It well, was another different. thing we would do is we would actually do some. This was actually an idea I came up with. We actually did trailers. We did live. We would do live action trailers for like let's plays. For example, when we did the 2013 Tomb Raider. Uh, playthrough. Mm -hmm. We did like a Indiana Jones style thing where you had a hat. Yeah. What we used to do back then too is that uh, we had a we had a green screen. Uh, back, back in the day, like my house was like a straight up like bachelor's pad. So we had like a big ass, I had, like a big ass pool table right here. Like right over there in that corner, I would have this huge green screen, and we would actually use that to film a lot of live action things. The problem with filming is filming with the green screen at the time for us is because money was an issue. Yes, and also uh, time was an issue because we only had the weekends to really get stuff done. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> lighting was a constant problem. Lighting was such a bitch. It really was. We would always have to deal with like black shadows and, and in the back of us. Yeah. Black sponge marks. And the, the best source of light that we had was unfortunately the window, which is right over there. <laughs> so if we wanted to do any uh, filming, we had to do it while we still had the while natural light. While we still light. had the natural light. <laughs> Again, it was one of those where we got to hope for the best and hope, mm -hmm. the, hope the green screen footage came out good upon filming it. Other problems that we would have, the cameras overheating. That happened a lot. We had like this little like, uh, was it a flip cam? No. I, I don't know what it was, but you know what I mean. It was like mm -hmm. a little gray thing that had like a USB port would stick yeah. in there. They would always it overheat. Would always it got hot here. It got hot. Uh, it's it's Fresno, and unfortunately, I don't have like real natural. I don't like have like an air conditioner in this house. It's always been like a swamp cooler. This is, this is an old house. It is an old house. Like this is like an old neighborhood. There's a lot of like houses that are built in the fifties and sixties years. But yeah, overheating was always a problem. We would have to like stop for a while, wait for cool down, and and do it again. And that would just be more, have, more time wasted. We would also have problems of that at your, at, your, at your place sometimes too. You know. Yeah. Because because uh, we're filming things in the summer has never been fun because you always have to turn off everything and you're just sitting here sweating trying oh, to trying to do script trying to d use a microphone to read scripts while it's hot around you it's miserable. <laughs> the first major thing we did I think uh, a filming thing though was uh, Streets of Rage, which ironically was actually our, our, our first review too because we yeah. filmed it in an alley. Uh, right behind your place, it was you. That one was very. That one was very much me experimenting with what. Well, it was the first time. Really yeah, doing. I was experimenting with all sorts of things. Like, what could I do if I really wanted to try to make something special out of our channel? Because that's when I was trying to graduate from the let's just being let's plays and trying to do something else. Right. And I wanted to see, like, all right, if I wanted to film something like a filmmaker, or like a reviewer, or anything really, we have tools. What can I do? Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to try to push when we did the Streets of Rage stuff. That's why I, I was able to get like interesting angles. Like you got that shot where it's from the ground and then you see my foot come down. Like I, I wanted to get a whole bunch of interesting shots and try to see if I could weave them together. And you, you know, kind of the, it, it's funny, but I still think it holds up okay. It holds up great. Like like the first half of the video holds up great. The second half is just like the review, and that's when the kind of whole thing went down. Yeah, because. Um, 
again, it wasn't really well thought out. It mm. was it was because it was really just an experiment, more more than anything. Um, well, yeah, like the very early days of the Brotherhood of Gaming, it was just very much we were just making videos for the sake of making videos. A lot of it was just fun, random stuff. One of the first things we did that went kind of viral was when we did uh, a Capcom Christmas Carol. Viral ish. Viral ish. It, it didn't it didn't go viral crazy like we thought it would. But it did get the attention of a of, lot of big names. Yeah, of, of people that we didn't expect it to. Like uh, Alpha Omega Sin, mm -hmm. he, like, he watched it, he liked it. Um, talked to him recently. Yeah. <laughs> it uh, was it was during a time. This was like right after like when Mega Man Legends three got canceled. So we were all pretty hot, and Capcom was in this weird phase where they were like Capcom remaking. was very band heavy with people. In fact, I think yeah. our, our video got somebody banned. Really? <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, like it was at that time where fans were running rampant on Capcom's pages and something, and yeah. they were they were doing something where they were putting the ban hammer on all sorts of people that would cause trouble on their forums or on their pages or. So anything. if we got you kicked off of Capcom, we we apologize. <laughs> Nine years later. <laughs> but yeah, people were very upset at Capcom and were mm -hmm. willing to do anything to throw them under the bus. And Capcom wasn't having it. They were they had enough. One thing I appreciate is that you've always been willing to go with any of my crazy ideas. Uh, I would come to you and say, "Hey, man, I got this idea." And you're like, "That's stupid. I'm down. I'm down." <laughs> Um, another thing we would try to do is that we would try to do like these theme months. When we were when we were strictly let's players, we were trying to do like theme theme months, try to mix it up. We did like an anime month where we played like anime games for a month. Mm -hmm. We did uh, a TBOG Nami, which was like a R O de Toonami, yeah. and uh, which was funny because actually the real Toonami came. Which back. yeah, which, <laughs> I guess we can take credit. And be like yeah, yeah it was us. <laughs> We're the reason Toonami's back. There you go. One of the last uh, months we ever did. You're was, welcome. Yeah, one of the last months we ever did was Dante Simber, which were when we let's played the first four oh, yeah. Devil May Cry games. That was the last one. But uh, I remember one time we did we tried to we came up with this idea one of the things that we did that we did that we didn't follow through on we did this weird thing where Bane would like take over our channel and like throw us into uh, this is like right after Dark Knight Rises came out. And, I think that was more of a you thing, actually. Yeah, and, and the whole idea was like you would do a month of doing let's plays by yourself as Bane. But I remember when you the first time we tried to record it, you were like sick as a dog, and you, you were just not comfortable with the mask. And so eventually we just kind of dropped the whole thing. But we did a couple of skits where I remember there was one like one of them had you dressed up as Heath Ledger's Ledger Joker, which you looked great by the way doing it. <laughs> and another one where we're being you're like beating us up in the uh, in the garage. It was it was strange. We were very experimental. We were just doing a lot of things. just a bunch of dudes having fun, and that's ultimately what YouTube was built on. Now, not so much. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, we also did a lot of live-action things with Batman and Superman, which was kind of... Uh, like, the DC console crisis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause, well, first we did things that were kind of like our, our, our take on how it should have ended with the whole <laughs> Batman Superman skits. We had, the, and, we had the costumes, we had the setup, and it worked. And it led to uh, 2016 when we did DC Console Crisis. Now, that was my idea. Mm -hmm. I was inspired by John Tron, who did Starcade, which is, he did like a whole like uh, mini series of Star Wars reviews. That's when oh, Force Awakens right. came out. He did, yeah. And yeah. I was like, well, you know, Batman v Superman's coming out. Why don't we do something with that? And of the things we did, I was I'm, I'm very proud of that because... That one came out pretty much as I, I envisioned it. Mm -hmm. So many things can go wrong when you're doing things on YouTube, but like, uh, but that one actually came out pretty, pretty much how, well. how, how pretty well. There were a couple of flubs. There was like one episode where we're doing PS2 games and you still have the Super yeah. Nintendo controller. Um, <laughs> but overall, I was very happy with that. And, yeah, that, you know. that, that did come out to be one of the better ones. Of course, I, there are aspects of it that naturally as time goes on and we get better at our jobs, mm -hmm. uh, things don't age well. That's <laughs> true, but um, looking back on it, I thought that because the whole story of it... You gotta start from somewhere. The whole story of it was that Batman was trying to get Superman in the mood for Batman v Superman so we would review all these Batman Superman games. And you know, the, and, I have been tinkering with the idea of doing like an all-in-one Superman video games type of video. Go, go for um, it. Yeah, yeah where it's just the video is just going to be like Superman video games dash the Brotherhood of Gaming. Perfect. Um, just going through all of them, and even even the, <laughs> like some of them I would even just like gloss over real quick. When I did Console Crisis, they weren't like serious reviews. It was more about the skits. That's also I, why I, I, I would I would I would say some stuff in it, but it was more no, it was more about us being Batman and Superman and doing these funny different things with it. Mm -hmm. But I was I, I've always been very happy for that, and you can still find that on our, our front of our page. You know, I yeah. I thought that was one of the creative things we did that actually 
pretty much. Came I thought that that was one of the live skits stuff that we did that I thought warranted still sort of being around. Mm-hmm. The other ones, well, could just not really. It was uh, later on. You know what actually kind of killed doing live action skits for me, hmm. and it, it was when, or not, I wouldn't say kill it, but maybe more cautious of it. It's when we did a review of Watch Dogs. And we did that. I don't think it was just Watch Dogs. It was Watch Dogs and I think Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Especially 60. Yeah. When we did some we did some live action skits for that. And I remember the we were reaction was so volatile. And it got to the point that, you know, maybe when it comes to like newer games, we should leave the skits out. And like we should just keep skits for like older games. You know? At that, the time, because it, that, that uh, just kind of turned me off Because what, what what was going on was we were getting really good with the green screen scope because I think by then we were starting to get the idea of like how the lighting should go, what effects we should apply to it for it to work properly. Mm-hmm. But then um, we were starting to get like uh, negative people who, <laughs> like I st- I th- when it came to Amazing Spider-Man 2, I think the problem was we criticized the game, but we, th- we still thought it was good. But the problem was well, apparently we didn't like it enough. But the reason why the green, the green screen uh, skits part became so controversial is because... As many of you know, there's a very popular, I don't know what he's doing these days, a uh, very popular YouTuber who does video game reviews. One, oh, of, one of the many oh, man. is the Angry Joe Show, and one of his popular shticks is that he does the same thing. He does openings, and I, no, I'll just be honest, I don't watch Angry Joe. I know who he is, I know what he does. Well, what happened was you made the, the sin of wearing a Superman shirt with a black leather coat, <laughs> and that was that. Well, yeah, like, automatically, everyone assumed, oh, this is an Angry Joe ripoff, you know. Which, <laughs> which of course you weren't. <laughs> it's, it's dumb. Like, we were very much DC. We're still DC fans. Of course. And, yeah, like, that was uh, that was kind of the thing, is, like, our group. Like, I was wearing the Superman shirt, you wore the Batman shirt. Right. Our other friends wore the Green Lantern shirt and the Flash shirt. Right. But um, everyone just focused on you because you had the <laughs> Superman shirt and you did a green screen thing. You know, so automatically you're ripping off Angry Joe, which is... Uh, which which is at the time I found to be insulting because it's like, you know, um, there, there was a part of me that's like, you know, you can hate on me for a lot of things. If you didn't like the way I reviewed a game, fine. If you didn't like my opinion, fine. If right. you don't like the way I do things, fine. But when you called me a ripoff, it was kind of like the Marty McFly and the being called chicken thing. No one it, called me a <laughs> It's like when you call me a ripoff, that's when I had a problem, and... To be honest, I still don't like being called a ripoff. I'm not here to rip anybody off. I'm just well. You haven't gotten anything like that in years. So oh no, that, that's kind of we, we've always just done. Like honestly, mm-hmm. if you think about it, everybody's ripping each other off. What are we doing? We're all sitting here acting like dumbasses on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us have weirder gimmicks than others. When I think about our Let's Play days, um, there are a few that stand out. Um, I one of my favorite ones is the Namco Cross Capcom one. Oh, because yeah. that's like our longest. That's like 151 episodes. And we cheated. And we cheated. <laughs> yeah, we cheated. And we had a section that was missed that, that we didn't record. Well, that I accidentally didn't record. But what was great about it is that despite how long it was, mm-hmm. we were consistently funny throughout all, all the way through it. I had fun. Yeah, <laughs> I, we, 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 it, it, it was in subtitles, so it allowed us to voice act it. Mm-hmm. And we just had such a ball just coming up. We we, 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 made, we made Jin Kasama and Dimitri Maximoff shipping a thing with that for some reason. <laughs> People thought that was really funny. Yeah. Some of the voices that we gave, like, or the dialogue that we cut in was really funny. Like, there was a line, I think, where Sakura was like, oh, wow, the flowers are here are smell really good, and I think I want to run in them. And then, like, Jin is the next one to pop in with his dialogue, except his dialogue didn't pop up yet, so that gave me enough time to give the quick, quick whip. I was like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> One one foot one that I remember is when we tried to let's play Superman sixty four, and it took us a few weekends to do that, and we finally got to the last level, and Bill rage quit, yeah. and he just he, it was so it was hilarious because Will kind of snapped, <laughs> so I said let me get the camera and follow him. You went outside, picked up a sledgehammer, and smashed that sucker into pieces, which I regret because I now have to buy the game. <laughs> I don't remember much from that night. <laughs> I think the thing about us back then is that we were trying everything to the point that I think maybe... It's like the Shakira song. Try everything. Yeah. To the point that I think maybe we kind of tried too much. Because we know we because the thing about us is that 
we never really got a consistent identity <laughs> audience, you know, like, like yeah, was always, there was always hills and valleys that certain things worked and certain things didn't. Some people came and went. And I, we got another comment recently that said, uh, I thought you guys quit years ago. turns out YouTube unsubscribed me. I got another, I saw that too. Yeah. I saw that too. Like, unfortunately it comes to a time where I, I we're yeah, still here, bitches. Yeah, I know, right? We got merch. <laughs> <laughs> we got Honestly, at this point I have stopped trying to appeal and trying to get with the newest thing. I mean, there's a part of me that still thinks that we do have to try to adapt and learn what the new, new, new things are. And I think Twitch mm -hmm. is one of those things oh, that yeah. we might have to start using more often. Right. Because uh, Vash has long since abandoned YouTube entirely. And now he's just full Well, like Twitch. I said, everything evolves. Everything's like live streaming right now. So <laughs> Yeah, so Twitch stuff, I think, is one thing that I do have to try to nail a bit more. I'm still not sure how it all works, like with the bits and... Mm -hmm. Hey, if somebody in the comments can let me know or like teach me how to properly use Twi Twitch, I've been using it for a long time. I just don't, I don't know all the ins and outs and all the, all, all, the, all the stuff and how it works. So later on, uh, it all started with your reviews of uh, Sonic Colors. And that's when we started to slowly make the transition from being a Let's Play channel to be primarily a video game review channel. And there were a couple of reasons. And I think it started because that's when the copyrights started to begin. And yes. Let's Plays... Like our Metal Gear Solid one is like completely copyrighted by Konami. <laughs> yeah, like when it came to Let's Plays, copyrights were going all over the place. And people were fighting over it. Like, no, you can't copyright it. It's a transformative art. It's a, And mm. that was a back and forth. And ultimately, it ended up that gamers lose. Yeah, always. Uh, so, yeah, now Let's Plays are incredibly hard to do unless they're, like, super retro. And even then, like, if it's Nintendo, you might still get copyright. Right. Um, but, yeah, that's why I said a, I did a I did a playthrough of um, Super Mario Galaxy 2. I'm pretty sure that was all things. Oh, yeah. And that's why some people some people have asked, like, how come you guys aren't, like, are you guys going to do, like, commentary runs on, like, the new Tomb Raider games, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and stuff? Uh, to continue with those two murder runs that we did. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but the reason probably, probably wouldn't be a good idea is because it'd be a waste of time. We wouldn't, if they're too new. Square Enix is going to take yeah, it. Yeah, they're, they're going to be gone. Yeah. I mean, they, they already they already tried to copyright the review that we did for Shadow. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, and that was a review. Yeah. Which they legally, legally cannot, but... Not gonna stop him. So you started off doing these uh, reviews, and the first and I came involved. The first review we actually did together of the modern reviews that we actually did together is no longer on YouTube. <laughs> it's uh, it was Epic Mickey Two: The Power of Two. That was the first one I joined you on. And what happened to that one? I don't know. The thing about you, Bill, is that now, like I said, when we transitioned mm -hmm. from Let's Play to review, you kind of went scorched earth on our back catalog. You kind of got rid of all that stuff because you wanted to focus on the new. I'm very and, much the Edna mode. It's like, I never look back, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, even recently, I found out that you privated your Castlevania review. And I was like, oh, man, I like, yeah. that, I like that review. But yeah, well, I didn't, so, again, I didn't delete it. I just privated it for another day. Yeah. So we that one we did. We did one of Metal, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. That got Which for some reason, like, I don't know why that one's not there anymore. It's up to you. I mean, you you you, have, you, you get these moods sometimes. I don't remember you know? deleting that one, though. Yeah, you get these moods sometimes where you're like, I don't want to see this. <laughs> you know, I don't want to remember or maybe, this. Or maybe I had a copyright problem. Cause hey, that's it, possible. It was, it was probably the music. That was possible. Um, but yeah, we started doing the reviews. And uh, uh, after that, I, I did uh, I did one call, I did one for a game called Anarchy Reigns. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that that was a one where I kind of showed you that I could do this. Because I did that on my own. Uh -huh. And right after that, you did like DMC Devil May Cry. Mm -hmm. And after that, we were just kind of off, off to the races, doing, uh, doing video game reviews, and kind of transitioned from the Let's Plays. But one thing that did come up from the Let's Plays, and you didn't mention it, you did a speed run of the first Tomb Raider game. Now, yeah, here's the thing about that. <laughs> when I first thought we were doing a speed run, doing something with Tomb Raider, I was like, I was hyped for it. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was a speed run with glitches, mm -hmm. and I was kind of taken aback. But I kind of got into it because I liked how you all the and that's why I did because yeah. I was because um, at the time and this was many years ago, uh, back when I was doing it, I was completely oblivious to the whole speedrun community. Um, I was about to say that uh, of all the things that we've done, like those have become like the most popular ones. But unfortunately, <laughs> you ha it gives you kind of a 
a negative feeling well, because of what happened. It's a double-edged sword, really, because of how it happened. And, and right. everybody has been telling me, like, oh, let it go. It's no big deal. It's their problem, not yours. Right. Um, but it was a place, it, it came from a place of ignorance, and nobody looked good on either side doing it. Uh, because I, I knew nothing about the speedrun community. I knew, I mean, I knew it was out there, and I know that the, the, there were these guys that liked to speedrun into games, and occasionally, once or so a year, they have this marathon where they all group together and they speedrun video games for charity. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And that's all I thought games about. Done quick? Yeah. Or, or, it, fast, yeah, or, or, or any variation of it. Right. Um, and I thought that that's all that was. I didn't know that this stuff was taken so seriously. Mm-hmm. Like, like poker at Vegas, like if you mess this up, you're getting a hammer to the hand. Um, or if you're doing anything, uh, well, quest- I, questionable. I think you were trying to claim it was like a world record, and I think that's well, that's I that's yes and no. Mm-hmm. Because here's the thing: it was because it was an inside joke that we had. Yeah. Because I was when I decided, like when I saw the Tomb Raider games being run, I was like, oh, this is cool. I've never seen this before. I've never seen these glitches be done before because you and I grew up solid Tomb Raider fans and we were like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. And you hadn't seen it. I'm like, this would be really cool if I made a video speed run and then I just presented it to you so that it would be live from your take and we just did co- uh, commentary. Yes. We, we did commentary over it, post-commentary, uh, and save face and give the illusion, like the showman that we were, right. that, okay, this is all happening in real time and just for the sake of making a show. And what's funny is, at the time, I did a little bit of homework, to, and I found out that the PC versions of those old Tomb Raider games were the go-to facto of what people speed ran, because those were, you could glitch them on, you can glitch them to high heaven, there were no load screens, uh, there were hotkeys so that you could pull a medic pack just by pressing a button and you didn't have to go to the menus for it. So the PC versions were pretty much like, if you were going to speed run Tomb Raider, those are the ones you did. And I thought it would be funny if I just speed ran the PlayStation games. And because I thought it would help boost our the view count a little bit, I thought it would be funny. It's like, wouldn't wouldn't it be funny if we just said that the PlayStation versions were world records because like nobody cares? <laughs> like, like nobody nobody's gonna care. Nobody ever plays the PlayStation. Oh, versions. no, you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> and and it and it was true. They don't they don't well they didn't at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, since then I think they found a few tricks here and there that it, improve their times right but yeah i was just like wouldn't it be funny if we just claimed these are world records on the playstation versions because nobody ever plays them <laughs> <laughs> well it turns out people a lot of people got really well it, t- it took three videos for it to happen right <laughs> um so yeah it was it was uh and it, and it was doing really i, I didn't on, on to be frank that was good it was only going to be that one video right yeah we were only going to do the first video because I thought it was cool, and then we were just going to move on to the next thing. But it exploded. It exploded. People loved it, and they came for the the speed run part of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. But it was clear based on the comments that they loved the commentary. It was, right. It was it was funny. Well, the it, stories were personal. It was ge- yes, it was genuine, and there's a lot of raw emotion in mm-hmm. that. Um, it's one of the even to this day I love going back and just listening. To I still get videos. messages and emails from people like that tell me how much they still love to go back and watch those. Like one of the best emails I got was from uh, a mother and her four year old daughter. They like to watch uh, like her four year old daughter gets comfort watching our speed runs of those videos wow. uh, of those games. And I got I was taken aback by that, but I was like, oh, we cursed in those videos. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, the mother told me that the the four year old daughter doesn't like to watch any other Tomb Raider videos except the ones that we made. That's an honor. But of course, the, there were other great emails that we gotten from people that were suffering depression and actually explained that the commentary and that the, the stories we told them it took them back, and they enjoyed listening to them. Well, uh, it actually helped them. The controversy came in is because obviously the speed runs that i was making they were faked mm-hmm. um they were well they were they were legitimately done like there were no game shark or hacks or any special treatment to make those look legit i really did have to play and perform every single one of those things that happened the the thing that was though uh, to cut for time or to save time really i decided to edit uh, to save the game constantly and edit in the best takes of every time i did a glitch and just keep like trimming together the footage from there and I thought that that was a smart thing to do to save time. What I didn't know 
was that was actually a very common practice abo- amongst malpractices of people who actually do try to cheat. Whoops. And, <laughs> you know, like, uh, who, who, who really have done that and have tried to go all the way and claim world records. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, and I, I didn't find that out until later. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> oh, no. No wonder. No wonder I was getting s- such a... No wonder I was getting, uh, I don't even know how many people were doing it. Not that many. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like the small Tomb Raider community, they, they really didn't like, because they thought what I was doing was genuinely, and completely understanding from their side, it looked bad. Because yeah. I did try to do it, because after the success of the first one and the success of the second one, I felt like, wow, we're really on to something here. People love this. And of course, me being like, well, people love this. Maybe the people that inspired me to do it will love it too. And <laughs> not so much. <laughs> Nevertheless, I did try to appease them a little bit because I wasn't going to delete the videos. They were making too many people happy. Right. But I was willing to try to appease them and fix what I could. So I did change the titles completely so that there was no longer any confusion. I made a long document explaining the situation. Whether or not they chose to believe it was completely on them. But I, <laughs> I did my, I, I, I told just the truth. Right. Um, now, I, one thing that was, and I admit it was on me, is I wasn't up front with them with the beginning. I was kind of jokey around with them because they were just like, like, I forgot how the chain of events happened, but I didn't delete anything uh, because I was just kind of joking around with them about, like, was this legit? Was it? Was it? Or wasn't it world record? Because I was just being the showman that I was. I didn't know how serious they took this. Like... Like I had committed like some big fraud and it didn't dawn on me until later. And by the time I was just like, oh, I just made myself look bad. <laughs> like, oh, no. But in the end, there was a lot more. Yeah, but, it, you know, um, despite how they feel about it now, I don't think they even care anymore if they, I, I don't know. I've, I've long since let it go and I did everything I did, could to try to rectify the problem. That's good. But ultimately, they made far more people happy than they did upset the people. And yeah. considering the kind of emails and messages we got from uh, people that were suffering like a depression and this actually helped, I don't know how, but you know, if these videos actually did help them in some way and gave them any form of comfort, then you know what? I'd do it again because yeah. it, it, ultimately I'm, I'm glad it did. Mm. I think it's always been some of our better work. And I'll always appreciate the commentary because they introduced us to other people like Jennifer Millward, Millward who joined us for Angel of Darkness. That's, mm-hmm. that's always been one of my favorite commentaries when we're talking about that. And um, uh, Ash. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, so those will always be kind of dear to me. Probably one of the best Let's Plays we ever did mm-hmm. was before we began the Brotherhood of Gaming. It's when we did, uh, we played Tales of Eternia together. And that was the first game we really kind of bonded over. Mm-hmm. And if there was any series we love more than Tomb Raider, or it's tale, it's the Tales franchise. Mm-hmm. So uh, we decided to do a tale. You decided to do a Tales retrospective. I sure did. And um, that kind of got off to the wrong foot right from the start. Uh, the very first episode, I couldn't get involved because um, there was a scheduling conflict. So it was you and Nate, uh, and then. Your first idea was you're going to go through every single game, have these long, very detailed videos. Like mm-hmm. the first video would talk about the uh, the, the making of the game, mm-hmm. and then the next part we just go through the story of the game. Mm-hmm. And we did that through the first two uh, games yeah. in the series. We kind of did a, we did we did the 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 game the, the the making of the game aspect for Eternia. Yeah. The thing was though. It, I found and I discovered as we were finished with Eternia is that it just wasn't practical. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. It just wasn't practical. So what happened was that kind of got put on the back burner. And I still got, find that the first parts, the explanation of how they got created, I still find those to be... Well, we did a long video on Fantasia, the story mode. Yeah, which... And that actually was a lot of fun to put together. A lot of fun it, to do. It was a lot of fun to put together. It's still funny. Because, yeah. Because we had fun with it. Right. But... It's like, who's this for? <laughs> like for who, us, basically. Pretty much. Like, but who's who's gonna who's gonna sit there and watch this like Lord of the Rings length? So what happened is that got pushed back and pushed back and pushed back to the point where the the comments section started to really explode. Like, what's the next episode of Journey? And what's the next episode of Journey? So I still get people asking, like, when am I gonna rip apart Berseria? <laughs> 
So what I I wanted to help you out, mm-hmm. and what I what I thought was there has to be a way we can kind of streamline this. Mm-hmm. And I, at the time, I was watching a lot of what culture, especially their wrestling videos, and they would do these things like top ten facts about WrestleMania, top ten facts about WrestleMania twenty five or whatever. And I thought about that, and hey, I think we can apply that to our Tales video. So I came up with this and idea of doing it? the top 10 Tales facts. And it was a good idea because they're not hard to make. It allowed us to actually play the games, to kind of get through them all, all the Mothership titles in a pretty, you know, uh, quick fashion to get them out. Mm-hmm. And it was a kind of a way to kind of be kind of unique, to kind of give some kind of information factoids about the backgrounds of those games. And um, I really enjoyed those. And they, 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 they didn't get the kind of views I were hoping for. But a few of them did. A few of them did. Like Attorneys. Attorneys did, did really good. I thought Attorneys came out came out great. Um, but yeah, it was a thing where I would uh, do do research. I would come up with the scripts, and then you would uh, play record the footage, mm-hmm. and uh, we would uh, put it. We would come to your place and film it, and we put it together, and we put about um, a good number of. Uh, we did pretty much did all the mothership titles and. Yeah. Uh, I've I've always been very happy with that work. I thought now there were a couple. I guess there were a couple times where I messed up some facts. Like I think like there was like a section where Bertha got a little funky. But overall, I thought uh, I thought they came out well. What was your thoughts on the on those videos? Uh, they were yeah, I really liked them. Uh, they got better mm-hmm. as uh, as you went along. Uh, I think some of the quality of them got better. Uh, I think some of the videos in general were better just because they gave us more material to work with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, when it came to the Tales of Retrospective, like I still think that the first three, in terms of like the explanation parts, are still watchable today. Mm-hmm. The first one, obviously, is a little... It's tough to watch for me now, because looking back, it hasn't aged too well. Mm-hmm. Lighting, once again, was a problem. Right. Uh, but the information is still valid. Yes. So, and de- and it's amazing, after you go from that one, and then you watch the first part of Destiny and the, the, the Attorney one, how, like, whoa, like... Much better. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't think there is a reason to continue the Tales of Retrospective in that form. Because by the time Eternia was done, the Wolf team and the Namco and the production, like, it it was done. Like, from from there on, it's much more streamlined. Yes. Like, there's not much more history to really tell uh, from the build-up, from from how uh, Yoshiaki and Igaki and Yoshiharu Gotanda formed... Wolf team after working with uh, that's reflected in the top ten facts videos because they went on they were just more about the game the the single development development of that game and, and if there's any on. more history that needs to be told about a certain game it it really can be done in review form so now yes. I think the retrospectives and the reviews can technically work in the same fashion now so while I still hold those first well like three, I said you just did one of Tales of Crystoria so there you go exactly really so they they flow together now. Mm-hmm. So when I continue the Tales of series in review form, like it'll be the Tales of Retrospective, but it's going to be how it's shown these days because it, it's practical, for one. Mm-hmm. It gets all the information that you need, and mm-hmm. it just works that much better, and you don't have to make five separate videos. <laughs> <laughs> What's the thing you learned the most uh, about your, your career on YouTube? What's the thing that kind of things are going to stick out for you when you reflect on the past? The fact that we've been doing this for, for a decade, we've made like a thousand, literally, maybe, I think we made like a thousand videos out there. <laughs> Regrets, I've had a few. <laughs> um, it's, and I guess you could say this is also an answer to anybody who wants to get started on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, really just do what works for you and just have fun doing it because there's really no, consistency I guess is key, but there's no, nothing is a guarantee. Right. on youtube there's no science behind it there never was it's either you get really like even now some people are some people make videos that are five seven years old and then suddenly they'll end up in the youtube recommended zone <laughs> and people are commenting like what the hell why is this now all of a sudden in my feed <laughs> right <laughs> yeah there's no science behind it it's 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 completely weird random and some people some people are hoping to this day that they'll make a different version of youtube somewhere else because it, it feels like as you said it's very corporate it's not fair to the ordinary user copyrights are a problem mm-hmm. uh it's it's a headache mm-hmm. uh well, a lot of things have changed over the mm-hmm. years. Uh, first, for one thing, the majority of our videos on um, on this page was filmed at your own old place. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we have a lot of memories from that old place. Um, I think about one of the things we did. We did a Mega Man X SNES retrospective Mm -hmm. that I wrote, uh, and um, a lot of that was done from that uh, from that place. Uh, We did a couple of videos. I did a couple of videos over there, like Mortal Kombat X and my Shantae reviews, where I'm doing the reviews in your place, and then suddenly you walk in. (laughs) Uh, We introduced somewhere you're going to. You're coming through my window. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, We introduced Rob in in, in there, which was a he became a big part of. Just kind of another character for us to kind of um, occasionally pull out. Um, you moved from that place about a year ago, mm-hmm. and now you have a, a brand new setup. Um, I'm a lot older than you. Uh, very recently, I got married. Uh, Will was the best man at my wedding. So, um, you know, it's it, this channel kind of represents kind of the friendship we've had for, for many, many years. And uh, you came up with this crazy idea of uh doing a channel i thought oh that, that could be fun you know and um we may, we may not have blown up in popularity the way we hoped for but, well i'm not giving up <laughs> no no but um i, well, I also fun. graduated to other things as well like mm-hmm. uh back then i i this was my full-time thing where i just wanted to do this all the time and mm-hmm. i still have fun doing it but even now i can say that there's a there's a little bit of the magic that has kind of died because there was a little bit of randomness to how things were done in the old days. And, Mm -hmm. but because of how corporate YouTube has, there's kind of a system and a way you got to do things now, which does kind of limit creativity a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, also if you want to, if you want to get your video watched, yeah, (laughs) there's there's a system and way things have to be done. Audio has to, but you know what? I have a lot of fun. I still have a lot of fun. Um, my wife enjoys watching my videos and watching me create them. Uh, she's very supportive of that. Uh, any plans for the future or things you want to, yeah. Well, the thing is I've also, uh, when, as I said, this is something that I used to do full time, Mm -hmm. but I wanted to grow and do other things and I became an actor. And I am now in voiceover, and I'm officially credited as an actor in a, in a new video game that is now available at, for retail. So, like, it's a step in the right direction. I'm I'm doing bigger and better things. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing this. I mean, no, we've, we've invested and come too far to let this die. This is where it all started, mm. and this will always be a thing. Some people have moved on and gone and done other things and have left, but new members may be coming in very soon. Uh, so It's always good news. So, so yeah, it's not going anywhere. The Brotherhood of Gaming will live on. We may not be the most popular YouTubers out there. We may not be your Some Call Me Johnnies. We may not be your Angry Joes. We may not even be your Angry Nintendo nerds. But you know what? We're still going to be the Brotherhood of Gaming. We're still going to be here doing more, creating new things. You never know what. I just hope that you guys will continue to keep on gaming, keep on viewing, keep on watching, supporting, liking, commenting, all of that stuff. And, well... This is our Teespring store and buy some merch. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee mugs, sweaters, shirts, which unfortunately we forgot to wear. But yeah, thank you guys for for the couple of you who have stuck around after all these years to hang out and watch us and support us. It, it, it's great to see you guys in the comments. And don't think we don't recognize your names. We, we, we definitely know the, the mainstays who have been here the entire time. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. You guys take care.